please be seated. <laughs> we have one emergency announcement. Um, somebody borrowed Jennifer's keys to get into the music room, and she can't go home without them. Does anybody have those keys? <laughs> Yay! Yay! Neymar, Neymar. I think you got a big mic on my mic here. Oh my gosh. We have another celebrity who just walked in the door here and uh, dark glasses in the back. Hi, Jim. Hey, so Jim. Glad to have you back. Yes, yes, it's you. Another miracle walking on water. <laughs> well, you know, on just a few short Sundays ago, I didn't even know if I'd be able to do this. Um, to let you know, um, things seem really at a razor's edge in, in my physical incarnation. But the truth is, I want you to know I've been resurrected. You are not over until it's over, and today's talk will be dedicated to just how deep we can go into our spiritual practices. And we're going to do that together. We're going to take everything that happens for grist for the mill for awakening. You are doing it in your own life. I am doing it in my life. We will do it in our collective lives together. Because that's how we grow in unity. That's how we grow in oneness. So welcome to Unity of Wilmington, where we tune in, in turn on, on, and tap into the loving presence of the divine. Not a divine that someday you're going to get to when you're finally good enough. Good Lord, the presence and power you're coming from right here and right now. With every breath that you breathe, with every thought that you think, with every way in which you be or choose not to be in the world, you make that decision. And we're making that powerful decision today, are we not? Yes. Once yes. again and again. Amen. So let's say our statement of oneness together. There, there is one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good omnipotent. God the good omnipotent. And each time we remember one of our six noble truths, we help embody these amazing teachings. Let's say them together. God is, I am, choose me thoughts, aware of feelings, changes perception, prayer and meditation, our inner work, loving kindness and forgiveness, our outer work, practice, practice, practice. And we are devoting ourselves to practice, practice, practice. If you've noticed, many things have changed. There'll be different ways in which I'll be delivering and playing with new toys with you. But we will still have toys to play with and go back and forth with. But it's going to be a little bit different. And the truth is, we are leaving ourselves open to whatever the moment calls for. So if there's a particular Sunday where the energy is not here for me to physically be here, we will have a wonderful message like we did last week. It was a great message, yes? Yes. We have it all ready to go. We have it ready to go. But my every intention is, is that I will be here. And that if I'm not here, Maureen will be here to be the parts to play around. So we are, we are in new territory, friends, as every day we are in new territory. <coughs> Everything is set in jello. No one knows when their conditions and circumstances can change, just like that. And so we're staying open to that, and your board honors that we do that, that we take quality care of ourselves yeah. so the complete healing can happen for me and for Maureen and for our congregation. I have 47 years of physical energy in my body I've been using to press outwardly. And I'm taking that same spiritual energy and I'm directing it inward into my own being now. And it's going to take a lot of energy and a lot of focus. And I'm going to make that my primary focus and share that journey with you, hoping that you will do the same in your own life as well as we awaken together, right? That's what we're here to do, most important. So, and thank you for your gifts, your cards, your letters. We are not just receiving billions of messages from you. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are receiving thousands, thousands from all over the country. And we're dealing with what we can deal with as we can deal with it. And everybody and their brother has a healing cure for eternal illness. <laughs> and I'm going to try maximum five at one time. I'm not going to change six a week and do seven every other week. I'm going to see if the four or five that I'm trying really do have an effect so I don't mix everything up and end up with a big conglomerate of a bunch of stuff that won't do anything. But I am feeling a change and a quickening in my body, in my spirit. Um, we've already noticed some amazing things happening. Whether a physical re reversal happens or not, the most important is a spiritual awakening. Yes. That is what we're here for. Yes. Bodies come, bodies come. 
Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> it's certainly not public. <laughs> so, tonight is um, youth night from 5 to 8 p.m. And that is for kids in middle school through high school. If you have kids in that age group, please drag them over here. They're, it's a great time for them to get together, get to know each other, share fun, food, and fellowship, and um, just have a great time. So bring them along. And also, speaking of the youth, next Sunday is Fly Up Sunday. And that's the time when the kids who are moving from one grade to the next get to come up and be honored and, and uh, greeted ceremony. by the next group that they'll be joining. So you won't want to miss that. If you have children, there will not be a 9 a.m. children's service, but they will be here at, for the 11. We ask them to all sit over here. And if you can have them here about 15 minutes early, Holly would really she appreciate, would appreciate it. that very much. So it, it helps to just kind of get things organized. You get to say thank you for all the year, years worth of work that goes on behind yes. the scenes that makes this look easy by all these people who make all this happen. So. Yes, yes. So please bring them along. Yoga is canceled for the following few weeks. Lisa is in Italy as we speak. Mm -hmm. so on a cruise ship. On a cruise ship, yes. With Mr. Yeah. Fancy Dan, I'm having a good time. That would be your husband. And, and so oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> so, okay. And, uh, but we do have an, a special opportunity for two healing nights that will be happening. They will be happening tomorrow night on Monday and also on Wednesday evening from 7 to 9. So if you haven't been, it's just an incredible evening to come in and sit and meditate and be healed by a number of different kinds of modalities. So we hope that you'll take advantage of We have the healers for your situation right here in this room. That's right. I know it personally. Yes. And Gail O'Brien led a beautiful and powerful prayer circle this past Wednesday, and she is also has volunteered to lead it for this coming Wednesday. And we would like to continue that. It, it happens at noon, and um, Christine McGavian and Jim Downer have also offered to participate in leading the group. We have a format set up. Set up. If there's anyone else interested in taking a leadership role, we'd love to hear from you. And. Um, if you just to come, if you're not interested in leadership, to just come in and hold their prayer energy because prayer does work. We have two weeks in two weeks. We have a very special guest presenting here for Sunday service, John Maxwell Taylor, and uh, he's bang a, bang Maxwell. Maybe that sounds good. Could be. So John is an award-winning actor and author, and uh, he had a band back in the 60s or 70s that opened for the Beatles and the Rolling Stones, and he, he's quite a character. So you won't want to miss him. He'll be here for the two Sunday services. He'll be doing a workshop Sunday afternoon, and another one on Monday evening. So um, we look forward to that. And again, we just want to send out our, our deep felt gratitude to all of you for all the cards and emails and um, wishes and those of you who came over and built our ramps for us and the ramp here. They so built me this ramp in about five hours. So literally winds out of the back door, winds around, winds in through the garage so I can play Mr. Zoomy, Zoomy, Zoomy with the stuff. And to see six grown men who all could do it and themselves, woman. one woman, woman Dasa, and, and do it without fighting was a miracle. <laughs> They did it the easy way, but yes, so thank you all so much. We, we, we really appreciate everything. We also want to let you know physically, um, I'm going to be, you'll notice my feet are moving a lot. I'm deliberately doing that. This leg, I want to keep people away from it, but I'm feeling motion back in it again. But I will be doing this kind of stuff. We know the foot is purple. It's the least of my problems. Yeah. And um, so don't worry about that. Don't spend a whole lot of time. It's like saying, don't think about lemons. Yeah. But just to let you know, to He's be honest. He's had purple feet for 40 years, so, so it's not nice. purple feet, purple feet all in my brain has been going on for a while, so don't worry about that part. It's all that wine you saw. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one other thing is, after the service, Richard's going to be in the back and he's going to zoom out because it, he just needs to be careful of his leg and foot. But I will be back to greet everyone, so 
when he she gives out, you know, when, you know where he's going, what's going on there. So, okay. Our prayer box is over here. Anybody in need of prayer, please take a moment to fill out a form, and we will hold you in prayer. And we have one of the givers who will meet you in the back of the room to hold the intention of healing for you. And today is birthday Sunday. So I'm not coming down off the stage. We're going to have all the birthday Sunday people come on up for two, right? This is shut off the... In the Odyssey, the sirens sing a song so irresistible that no one can hear it and escape. And um, Circe warns Odysseus of the danger and tells him how to avoid it. So this, reader, this reading is from Homer's Odyssey, book 12, uh, verses 41 through 58. So. Square in your ship's path are sirens, crying beauty to bewitch men posting by. Woe to the innocent who hears that sound. You will not see his lady nor his children in joy crowding about him home from sea. The sirens will sing his mind away on their sweet meadow lolling. There are bones of dead men rotting in a pile beside them, and flayed skins shrivel around the spot. Steer wide, keep well to seaward, plug your oarsman's ears with beeswax kneaded soft. None of the rest should hear that song. But if you wish to listen, let the men tie you in the lugger, hand and foot, back to the mast, lashed to the mast, so you may hear those harpies' thrilling voices. Shout as you will, begging to be untied. Your crew must only twist more line around you and keep their stroke up till the singers fade. us apart, 
that which joins us, binds us, is made clearly known on earth. For a few moments, we breathe in and we breathe out. This present, undistracted moment where we are attracted to the divine presence that loves us without conditions. Holy Source Love. You and I and all beings are one. As we peel away the layers of our deluded mind, that which is pure and holy, that which remains essentially the same, reveals itself to us. This is not as hard as it seems but it does take our willingness to practice, practice, practice. And for the gift of doing that this morning, we are grateful for these marvelous teachings and our teachers. We give thanks. Namaste.
All is well and swell with my soul. That's the most important message we've got as we begin this journey of authentic empowerment. Turn the light back on to our, our physical self, but know the spiritual light that shines is forever. It has nothing to do with the body, and yet it's established within a body. The miracle of heaven happens on earth each time we show up to who we are. I'm ready for an exciting adventure of teachings this particular summertime, are you? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This particular talk is called The Sirens of Odysseus. And there'll be some lesson summation points, but I'll be reading them for you. The four points today as we talk about distraction are this. Nothing new. We don't just react to distractions outside of us. We, ourselves, are continually creating them. We cook them up. We keep them going. They are our companions. I call them shoody, woody, goody. <laughs> our favorite pets. We're constantly looking for another shoody, another goody, another woody to be distracted. Distractions, my friends, arise when the natural flow of the sense presentation, sense perception, is joined with and then tainted by our emotions. That's why it's kind of hard to see, because it's all mixed up with stuff that we don't know why we want what we want, but we want it, but we're not sure what it is we want, and then when we get it, we don't know what the heck to do with it. Point number three, life and death. So Val Rinpoche, our teacher for this particular series on Tibetan Book of the Living and Dying, said, life and death are in the mind and nowhere else. Mind is revealed as the universal basis of our experience the creator of happiness, and the creator of suffering. The creator of what we call life and what we call death all happen where? In the mind. In the mind. An authentic spiritual path is one that requires that we par away, that we layer upon layer every level of distraction in our way. We're willing to look at that so that which is essential can remain as boundless space of the awakened Buddha Christ consciousness, say amen, I'm ready for that. Amen. I'm ready for that. And where it comes from, this talk actually comes from, and I'm going to be playing with a lot of notes and fumbling things around as I get used to my new way of teaching. I'm up here as well, too. This actually comes from something Maureen gave me, well, from the World Wide Web, which is a very good way for us to look at what we'll be talking about here. Sirens are half women, half bird like creatures who sang with such sweet songs that listeners forgot and died of hunger. The sirens are sisters who lure sailors to their death. The song of sirens is irresistible, but the sailors' boat, when they reach the reefs, can be destroyed by these sounds. Odysseus and the work with the Argonauts find a way in which to pull themselves away from these very enticing sounds of out of distractions by binding themselves to the mass of their teaching. You know, be still and know that I am God, Jesus said. You know, I give you a peace that passes all human understanding. Sometimes you need to strap yourself up, my friend, shut off the motor, and just allow yourself to be present with the sound of the siren. Now, the sounds of the sirens are not just out of distractions, they're inward distractions. So we're getting ready on Tuesday when all you guys were there building ramps to amp up my backyard. And I'm, I'm noticing everyone in my house. There's about at least eight or nine people in our house at any one time. We've got my daughter, who's from Hawaii, who's here. We've got my other daughter, who's here, from Wilson. We've got my grandson and my granddaughter. And we've got my... Everyone's got cellular device. They've got their computer. They've got their cell phone. They've got their... Everything's turned on to the world of appearances. Even the people who are doing the work to get ready, they all have their devices turned on, and everyone is massively distracted by not only the project that they're doing, but the one that they're planning, the future project that's about to happen. And I thought to myself, isn't this interesting? Distraction. But the Buddhists tell us distractions are just distractions. Noises are just noises. Sights are just sights. Smells are just smells. Listening is just listening. Hearing is just hearing. 
and thoughts are just thoughts. <laughs> I call that a good day. Thoughts are just thoughts. They are always with us. We don't try to get rid of distractions because they'll always be with us, won't they? June 9th is coming soon, right? Another distraction. Another something to take over the screen of your life that you'll be distracted by. But I guarantee, I make a prediction, that distraction will be replaced by another one. And then one after that, and one after that. The amount of distractions we will have among us will be infinite until we're done with this body. And I think even beyond that. Because we're here to learn how to pull away from the mind that is distracting. And what is it that's distracting us? But our own mind, our own thoughts about our mind. And the Buddhists call this wandering mind. They call it, and I love this word, they call it the monkey mind. You know your monkey mind, Alan? Oh, the monkey mind is always going to and fro. Monkey mind wakes up in the morning, it doesn't know where to go. It wants to go here, it wants to go there, it wants to have some fun. Oh, look, she's cute, I sure like some time with her. Oh, look at that nice looking one. I want that outfit over there. I'd like that dress, what a beautiful car. Ooh, I think I'll turn on that particular site. Right. Where's that one going to take me? Someplace I haven't been before? Or someplace maybe I don't need to go? <laughs> Distractions. We're all smiling. I'm with you. They're everywhere. They'll always be among us. They're not about outer distractions. They're about the mind that's distracted. How to look at the distractive, contracted mind. How to be really honest about what it is that it keeps showing us and what it reveals to us. In order to be able to do that from a firm foundation, we need spiritual practices to help us tie ourselves up to the mess of our forgetfulness. And sometimes it requires that we get some good thick earwax and stick them in our ears so we don't get cold again, because we will. There's nothing wrong with the sensuous sounds of the Siren Sisters. There's nothing wrong with chakras one, two, and three. You don't get away from them by denying them or fighting them. You lift them. As I be lifted up, I lift all energies unto me. So we don't push them away or deny them. We become aware of them by practicing what's called medical, what's practice called mindfulness, calm, abiding meditation. Mindfulness, abiding meditation. To allow ourselves to come back to mindfulness, abiding meditation over and over and over again. I gotta tell you that what I'm involved with right now is the picture around, I wanna show you a picture of my new life. This is Richard Levy's new life. Isn't it exciting? Yeah. That's my new life. Um, I have a life that's got a hospital bed, one that I didn't need three weeks ago. That's a little chair I got, one that I didn't need three weeks ago. That's a potty chair that I didn't need three weeks ago. That is my life. I am tied to the mast of circumstances that I cannot do anything about except resist and go crazy. And I want you to know there have been many moments when that was my option. Many moments when I wanted to crawl back into the back bedroom, close the door, put the covers over my head, and wait for the nightmare to be over. Please understand, I am teaching you things I still need to work with. Did you get that? Yes. But I've also noticed there's a part of me that ain't done yet. <laughs> there's a part of me that's not finished. There's a part of me that's not saying, oh, that's good. I'll just sit back here and wait till something stops. But it says the mind doesn't stop. The mind never ceases. ceases. Course in Miracles says, the mind never loses its creative force. A Course in Miracles says that. There's never a moment that you are not creating something, right? Right, right. Always. So what do you choose to create in this moment? You do with your mind, whether it's attached to a body called Richard, or Maureen, or Gail, or Michael, whoever you want to call yourself. Your mind will be your mind and it'll be with you always. So the work is with the mind. So I'm working with the mind. So what have I decided to do? I'm going to make this to teaching. For however long I get to be here, whether it's six weeks, six years, I have no idea. I'm going to use it to strap myself to the mantle of what I've been teaching for the last 45 years to other people and see what it bears fruit with. Amen. Amen. To see what we can do with this. 
Because you are in your own situation room, aren't you? Yes. Oh, mine seems more severe than yours. <laughs> oh, look at me, my little potty chair. Oh, poor pity potty. The truth is, you're sitting in your own little potty chair, too. <laughs> Cooping and whining and complaining about what doesn't work and why you're not getting what you want. Somebody would do this, and somebody would have it like that. Then finally, you'd want, if you only got younger, it'd be older, had a taller or shorter. Joan Lamb, you know what I'm talking about. You've been at this forever. Your stuff doesn't go away. Because you know what? I've been at it forever. I've been at, now I've got a conscious reason to practice. I can't wiggle my way out of this. There's no wiggle room out of a 12 by 12. <laughs> I'm either going to go insane or wake up. <laughs> and hopefully I'll share enough of the awakening moments not to drive y'all insane. Maybe the same thing. But this is about us. This is about us, isn't it? Yes. You and I in our minds and how we deal with those things that we're called upon to deal. What I noticed about the distracted mind is it, it, it just creates more distractions. It doesn't just deal with distractions, it creates more of them. Have you ever noticed... <laughs> you ever wanted to be in the bathroom? I'm going, why am I reading the Drano can instructions on this page? <laughs> why do I need to know how it activates food particles in my drain? Why am I reading about how to wash my towel? I, I don't need to, maybe I should cut this little thing off. If you remove this, danger of federal law. Have you ever tried to just cut it off just so see if you get in trouble? <laughs> what is the matter with us? We are insane. That's what's wrong with us. It doesn't go away. We just learn how to laugh at it sooner, get detached from it quicker, and disengage from it. We learned how to, to tie ourselves back up again, again. Here we go again. We're doing it again, starting again. And so I'm choosing to live right in the middle of my living room with my family, which means there are instructions on how to behave properly with people. There is. You live in a big family. You come from a family of 11. There are operating instructions. Anybody wants to come in and be a poo-poo in my house, you're not invited. If you don't know how to heal you work with your own internal energy structure, if all you want to do is be a taker and not be a giver, well, you won't get invited over a whole lot because I have no extra energy yeah. for drains in my life right now. Mm -hmm. You hear me now? How about you? Yeah. It doesn't mean you don't love people. It doesn't mean you don't care about them. Is you realize this is a critical time in your life. And you may not have as many moments left as you think you have in your body. And you don't want to waste any time running around trying to please people who you are never going to be able to please. It's not going to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm finished with trying to do that. And I'll try not to be rude with you when that shows up, but there'll be days when I will not want to see anyone or talk to anyone about anything. We've had some serious meltdowns in our house. And you know what? I'd be surprised if we didn't. Wouldn't you? Yes. Life is hard. You're in a body here. You're working hard. If you're not having at least one or two serious meltdowns, along with four or five joyous sessions of absolute laughter and hysteria at the craziness of this embodiment, you're missing out on full life. So we're going to be well in our souls, are we not? Yeah. We're going to wake up to who we truly are. And we're going to use a great book. How many of you have read Tibetan Book of the Living and Dying by Sogal Rinpoche? Not many hands have gone up. Forty-five books are being ordered. It's not just about dying. Oh, here goes Richard. Oh, we're all going to get to die for eight weeks, nine weeks. Uh, aren't you glad you came? Here's Richard in the party chair. No, that's not what we are going to be doing. I promise you, if we do get the hook, knock me off, pull the battery out, get someone else here to teach you. We're going to use this to awaken. Because until you learn how to die, you can't live. And until you learn how to live, you don't know how to die because neither have anything to do with your body, right? Because right. we're not bodies, we're spiritual beings going through spiritual experience, having physical moments in time in the body. So that's what we're going to wake up to, right? That's what we're going to use this for, and that's what we're going to use these teachings for. And I'm not just going to be stuck to any one particular tradition. Another book that's grabbing me, don't buy it yet. Don't buy it yet. Don't buy it yet. Stick with the Tibetan Book of the Living and Dying. Is It's called you are the placebo. 
And I'm going to pick up and throw that one as well, too. That'll throw some stuff in your own pipe. Maybe get dizzy. <laughs> it's another great book. So here we go. We're going to start this journey. I want to go back here. Whoops, there goes my glasses. To the lesson summation, because here's the four points I hope we cover today, and I want you to be able to take home with you as well. So number one, the sirens of Odysseus. We don't just react to distractions outside of us. We ourselves are continually creating them. Watch that tendency. We cook them up. We keep them going. They become our companions, our pets. Could he, would he, and should he? <laughs> Distractions arise when the natural flow of sense perception is joined with and then tainted by emotions, most of which we're not aware of. We'll become more aware of them. Life and death happen in the mind and nowhere else. Mind is revealed as the universal experience of the creator of our happiness and the creator of our suffering, the creator of what we call life and what we call death. An authentic spiritual path. And for those of you who are here, so people say, what about Unity of Wilmington? I said, people are on an authentic spiritual path here. They really are. It started with you guys, it's continuing. We are here to par away, layer upon layer, every level of distraction that keeps that which is essentially true from revealing itself to us. Otherwise, what is the point of all of this? <laughs> to just go crazy? That which is always there. We want to reveal that which has been hidden. So you can join me now, are you guys? Nice hot summer night series. Not just turn up the external heat, but the internal heat, the fire of the presence of God as we awaken to who you are. Are you ready to join in that journey? Yes. Yes. I know you are and you wouldn't be here if you weren't. I can't wait to teach these teachings to you. I can't wait to learn everything I can from this moment. And I can't wait to have all of you to listen to what we have to say to each other about what it means when we awaken to who we truly are. We'll practice well, won't we? Yes. And deeply. It won't be just for us, but for the benefit of all beings everywhere. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>
Deus. 